Ori is a great game, and I love killing bosses, I love doing all that stuff, but one of my biggest problems is storage. You get so many items and your chests start looking like this, and then your friend Bob decides to just put everything wherever, and your chest end up like this in no time. This video is going to show you how to fix that with a really easy solution. What if I told you that these about 10 blocks can hold 5,120 items? We can search items that we want and even craft items from within this network. Let's go ahead and get into how this works. The first thing we need to do is make a storage component at a workbench. This is the base item for creating any magic storage component. Now, this item in itself is useless. You can't store anything in it. It is just a block. The first thing we want to do is make a storage heart. This is the device that you will be using to access your storage. Without the heart, there is no storage. Now, to make this, you need a storage component, two of any diamond, which we'll get into in a second, as well as three emeralds. Now, you noticed how I said any diamond. Now, this is a diamond, but also this is a diamond, and this is a new item introduced within the mod. Every time you kill a boss for the first time, it will drop one shadow diamond. There is a total of 14 of them that you can get. This is just a way to kind of speed run the process a bit. So all you want to do is go ahead and create one of these. We're going to go ahead and go over here and place this right here. Now, the problem with this is we don't actually have any storage slots available. So let's go ahead and see if we can fix that. We are going to create what's known as a storage unit. This holds 40 items. We need a storage component, a chest, as well as 10 of any silver bar. And we're going to go ahead and just pop it on down right next to our storage heart. We are now able to store items within it. We have 40 slots, which isn't much, but the thing is, is one stack of items, even if it's 9,999, is one slot. So I can put all these emeralds in and have no problem because it's just one slot within the network. But now we've run into another problem. 40 slots is a decent amount early game, but what if you want to upgrade? That's when storage upgrades come into play. You're going to go ahead and head to an anvil, and you want to go ahead and have some amethyst as well as some crimtain bars or your corruption bars. And you're going to see this little item right here called a crimtain storage upgrade. It's 10 bars, 1 amethyst. We can go ahead and grab this, go here, right click the storage unit, and suddenly we are now at 80 of the slots instead of 40. And there is heaps of these. There's a hellstone one, there's a hollowed one, there's a blue chlorophyte one, there's a luminite one, a tarot one, and the last one holds 640 items per unit. The best thing about it though is by simply adding more units that will also increase the storage size we just simply connect this new one to that one by having it touch and we upgrade this we now have 160 slots just like that through these two ones now one thing that we're having a problem with though is we have a lot of stuff in our system but how do we craft within this let's go ahead and fix that we're gonna go to a storage component after creating it you're gonna see something pop up called the storage crafting interface where you need one diamond as well as three sapphire upon creating this we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we place it where it connects to our storage heart it can be like this it can be right here it's as long as it's just in the general area and it's connecting to one of the storage units or the heart it will be a-okay i'm gonna put it right here though now all we need to do is open it up and we don't have anything that we can actually craft yet because we don't have any stations we're gonna go ahead and grab our anvil and our workbench we're gonna put our supplies within this little storage network here and lastly we just need to go to the crafting stations and we're just going to put in a anvil and a workbench. And suddenly we can craft all of these items. It will show you how many ingredients you have for this item. You can also search for things. Say you wanted to look for this bloodlust thing. You can go ahead and do that. Click this. Go ahead and hit craft. And now you have a new weapon. Then you can go ahead and grab it from here. And just like that, we've crafted a new weapon within our storage system. There's also various sorting options, such as searching for weapons, melee weapons, range weapons, you name it, throwing weapons, tools, armor, ammo, equipment, and so forth. You can sort by default, ID, value, damage, total quantity, stat count, and then you can even search for things that you can't craft. Say you wanted to maybe craft a daybreak, but you weren't sure what you were missing. Well, in this case, we're missing 18 solar fragments. If we had those, we would be able to craft those if we had also a ancient manipulator. It makes things incredibly easy to go ahead and check what you are missing for certain recipes. Sometimes you can find out that you can craft an item that you didn't even know that you could craft. 
or existed in the first place. Some of these more complex recipes, this is where the system comes to play. Now, what if this little bit bothers you and you want to have your storage kind of in a better spot or create some distance between the storage? We're going to be going ahead and crafting within our storage with some storage connectors. You need some wood, 16 wood, and one iron. This will create 16 of these connectors. We're going to go ahead and craft a few. And with this, these act as little pipes that you can go ahead and place. And by simply placing these, and they're not solid blocks, by the way, so you can go through them. These storages are now connected. Now, these can go ahead and work just fine together. The same can also be done with the crafting station. If we go ahead and grab this and say put it right here in the middle, and then we put in these crafting stations again. And just like that, we now have a storage crafting interface right here, but we're actually crafting from items way over here. Now, you can make this, from my understanding, quite unlimitedly. Now, what if for some reason you decided, you know what, I really want to be able to access my storage from way up here, but I don't want to make another storage heart. And you're looking for the storage access. This is going to allow you to access it from multiple locations. Now, you just need three topaz, a diamond, and a storage component. This acts as a alternate to a storage heart so you can go ahead and put it right here and you can do the exact same thing that you did down here but you can't craft within it but if you wanted to craft within it you could then do the exact same thing that we've done where you go ahead and make a storage crafting interface and upon going ahead and doing some remodeling you can now access storage from both here and here but also craft from both here and here as well all right now what if you're on a huge journey and you just really need one item from your storage and you're lazy well i have a solution if you go ahead and create yet another storage component there is what's known as a remote storage access with this you can go ahead and craft it and this is going to allow you to access your storage from another location even if it's far away the next thing you want to do is create a locator this is made with 10 meteorite bars as well as two amber after crafting those items go ahead and head to your storage heart and you're going to go ahead and with your locator right click on it and it's going to set the coordinates then after that we are going to go ahead and go to say the dungeon say this is our new base we're going to place the remote storage access then go ahead and right click on it and you are now successfully linked this has a, a thousand block range it will consume the item upon use but now we are accessing this stuff all the way from where we were previously. Pylons actually extend the range by about 100, but long story short, a thousand blocks give or take. But wait, it's not done yet. It's never over. By going to your crafting interface and going to locators, you're going to want to go ahead and make another one. And then you're going to want to go ahead and make a basic portable remote storage access. You can go ahead and grab it, right click on your storage heart, and now you will notice if we hold it in our hand, we now have this big green block around us. Now, if we go all the way over here, if we just go ahead and left click, we can now access our storage from a thousand blocks away, if not a little bit more. What if that is not enough? What if we really, really want to be able to access our storage in even further areas? We can go ahead and create a advanced portable remote access with a mithril anvil. We now need a basic portable remote storage access, as well as 20 pearl wood, 15 mithril bars, and 10 chlorophyte. Go ahead and make it, do the same process where we link these up, and look at the radius now. It doesn't end there though. There is one final upgrade we can get in terms of this, and it's the best one of all. Now this last part does require Moonlord to be defeated, because it requires something from Moonlord. You want to go ahead and convert your advanced portable to a ultimate portable. You need the advanced one, 15 of the conduit plating, 8 luminite bars, as well as a radiant jewel which drops from Moonlord. By crafting this, you can now access your storage from anywhere. And I mean anywhere. We are over here, we are on the other side of the map, we can access this just fine, and you are all good to go. This is the ultimate upgrade, and if you have this, you will never have to return to your base unless you want to. It is absolutely ridiculous. But wait, it's not done yet. Go ahead and make another locator. Then, create something called a basic portable remote crafting access. You can make this item with a locator, 20 wood, 15 iron, 10 demonite or crimson bars, 3 diamonds, and 3 sapphire. After creating it, go ahead and right click on your crafting interface, 
now we can go up to about a thousand blocks away and as you can see you can see our actual like radius where we can cr uh, craft still now if you don't hold it you don't see the radius now if we go ahead and go to the outside of this location and we go ahead and left click with this item in our inventory bam you can now craft anything that you can craft within your storage heart with your crafting interface right here on the go i want to craft this accessory i craft it i put it on that is done now if you go ahead and put the item away the box goes away so it's not annoying on the map but we can go ahead and improve the range further by upgrading this we go here and we do the same exact thing where we go ahead and make a advanced one the advanced portable remote crafting access with 20 pearl wood, the basic one, 15 mithril bars, and 10 chlorophyte, we can now make a better and improved version that has better range than before. But once again, it doesn't stop there because we can go even further by making the ultimate version. And that ultimate version is with the advanced version, 20 conduit plating, as well as 15 luminite. And you already know what this is going to do. We can now craft from literally anywhere in the world, just like this. So with this combo, you will never need to go to your base unless you absolutely want to. After like using this mod for a while, it's so hard to go back to vanilla. I absolutely hate using chests, and so that's why I use this mod so much. So yeah, that's kind of it, honestly. That's basically the guide. I hope that this was helpful. I know there's a lot of information that I kind of dumped on you guys. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you do enjoy the video, because a lot of you guys are not subscribed. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys did. Thank you.